the basis of my 12th 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the law kept 38 section 18 and the government of my 15th 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place this meeting of the Sturbridge Board of Selectmen will be conducted by a remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information in the general guidelines for remote participation can be found on the town's website at www.sturbridge.gov slash town hyphen administrative slash pages slash how hyphen access how virtual hyphen meeting. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to listen in or watch the meeting either online via the town's on-demand video broadcast on cable TV on channel 191 or dial into the meeting at 774-304-1455, enter 1428 pound for the meeting number and 12345 for the access code. This phone number is only active for the public during public meetings. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post audio and or video recordings transcript of a comprehensive record of the proceedings on the town's website as soon as possible after the meeting. Okay, could we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice. Okay, on the agenda this evening, we have public service announcements. We have a moment of silence. We have a recognition of an employee, Barbara Hoido. We have a 635 public hearing for propane tank at Seal Energy. 645, we have another public hearing, propane tank, porch light 3, LLC at 420 Main Street. We have a presentation by Mr. Morrow of Pine Lake Resort, Tom and Reports Facilities Manager, Town Administrator. We have several action items, consideration and possible acceptance of a resignation from the DPW, consideration and possible action on the concurrence of an appointment to the Administrative Assistant for Conservation, Consideration and possible action on the concurrence of appointment of Terrence Masterson to the Economic Development and Tourism Coordinator. Consideration and possible action on the acceptance of the warrant for the 2020 state election and authorization to sign it and to post it. Consideration and possible action on salt vendors for winter of 2020-2021. Consideration and possible action on the selection of delegates and alternates to the, from the Board of Selectmen to the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission. Consideration in review of the authorization of $1,000 of project funds from the town administrator budget for the purpose of conducting a background investigation on the finalist for police chief. Consideration and possible action on a memorandum of an agreement amended among the Massachusetts Department of Transportation and the Town of Sturbridge and the U.S. Department of Transportation, Transportation Federal Highway Administration, Eastern Federal Land Highway Division for the design and engineering services for the Grand Trunk Project. And we have old business, COVID-19 updates, Board of Selection and Participation, in the Municipal Vulnerability Program Stakeholders Meeting, New Business, Correspondence, Approval of Minutes, Citizens Forum, and New Wealth Adjourned. Okay, Chase, do you have any public service announcements? I have no public service announcements. Thank you. Mike, do you? 
I, I just wanted to mention uh, that uh, the Mass Department of Transportation will be having an online um, uh, informational session on October 22nd. Uh, and to get more information about that, this is about the east-west rail, if, uh, if townspeople are interested. And that, that will be on October 22nd. For more information, uh, you can go to mass.gov, www.mass.gov, uh, east-west rail, rail study. And that, you'll get to the website to uh, get more information if you're interested. Okay, Mary, do you have any? Um, yeah, I would just like to personally extend my prayers for a full recovery to President Trump and the First Lady, and also my prayers to Vice President Pence and his family, and former Vice President Biden and Senator Harris and their families, that they stay healthy so the Democratic and election process can continue with everybody in a healthy and safe way. Okay. Ian, do you have any? I have none. Okay. We do have um, the posting from the town clerk on the autumn voting guide. It can be found on her website, too. We can announce all the dates later on at our next meeting. But to get started, the polls will be open Saturday, October 17th, 2 to 4 and 6 to 8 p.m. And Saturday, October 24th, 8 to 12 a.m. and 2 to 4 p.m. The last day to register to vote or change your political designation is the October 24th date. Early voting at the town hall will begin Sunday, October 18th at 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And we can list the other times and dates, or people can go directly to the website. Okay. Okay, next on the agenda, could we please have a moment of silence for all those people affected by COVID-19? Okay, thank you. Okay, next we have the um, interim police chief to give a presentation to Barbara Boydo, who has completed 30 years of service as a dispatcher to the town. Chief? Thank you. I'm just going to read the letter of uh, appreciation we, we gave to Barbara on September 17th. We also presented her with a plaque on, on that day. Dear Barbara Boydo, congratulations on your 30th anniversary of your employment with the Sturbridge Police Department. You have served as a full-time dispatcher since September 17, 1990. Now at your career milestone, we proudly honor you for your significant part you play in maintaining our professional standards and your many years of commitment to public safety at the Sturbridge Police Department. We know you have worked hard for this accomplishment and we truly appreciate your dedication as the 30 years past, the technology, equipment, and operational procedures of being a dispatcher has changed tremendously. I commend you for adapting and embracing the changes, and I thank you for all your efforts in leading our communication center. Job well done. In recognition of your 30 years of dedicated service, we presented Barbara with a plaque on September 17th, and we thank her for many years of service. Barbara, when Barbara started back in, um, 1990, she had a single red phone that she would answer in the event of emergency. And now today, with today's uh, demands on our dispatcher, she's given pre-arrival pre instructions to patients that are in life and death situations um, uh, over the phone, given uh, emergency medical advice. So uh, the times have changed, and she is such an asset to this police department. We're kind of squeezed in this area, but you can see her. And, um, Thank you, Barbara. Hey, Barbara, on behalf of the board, thank you for your many years. It's the town's policy also to present a plaque at the annual town meeting. So hopefully we will see you there so we can 
express the total town appreciation for all you've done, not just as a dispatcher, but all your involvement and in other things. So congratulations. Anybody else want to say anything? Okay. Barbara, I just want to congratulate you. I've, I've gone in the police station and talked with you, and you're just such a pleasant person. And, and thank you for all your years of service. I really commend you. Hey, Mary. I just also want to echo that sentiment and say being a dispatcher has got to be such an incredibly stressful job, and I can't imagine a full-time dispatcher for 30 years. So congratulations. Stay healthy and happy and safe. Okay, Mike. Yeah, thank you uh, for for your service, Barbara. Uh, and I know uh, a lot of people at the safety complex uh, really uh, have worked with you over the years, and uh, and uh, you've you've done a wonderful job. And uh, we really appreciate all your service. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Barbara. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, you as well. Take Thank care. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Next on the agenda, we have a public hearing for propane, propane tank at Seal Energy LLC, 59 Technology Park Road, Durbridge, Mass. Mike, do you have the... The public... The uh, yeah, I have the application and... The public notice is uh, what is it on page page eleven? Uh, okay, uh, yeah, I've got it here. Uh, the uh, town of Sturbridge Board of Selectmen, in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter One Forty Eight, Section Thirteen, hereby give notice that a public hearing will be held on October 5th, 2020 at 6.35 p.m. for the application of Sale Energy, LLC, for a license for storage tanks for flammable materials located at 59 Technology Park Road, Sturbridge, Mass, 01566. This he hearing will be held at Veterans Memorial Hall, Sturbridge, Town Hall, 308 Main Street, Sturbridge, uh, the Sturbridge Board of Selectmen elect, consistent with Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, Ch General Laws Chapter 30A, uh, Section 20, to hold public hearing virtually. Uh, details regarding how to virtually access a meeting can be found at HTTPS www Sturbridge dot gov forward slash town dash administrator forward slash pages forward slash how access dash access dash virtual dash meeting. Okay, is there a proponent here for it, Jeff? Uh, Lenny, are you on the on the call on the meeting? Lenny Jalbert. Yes. Good evening. This is Lenny Jalbert. Yes, I, I'm here, and I'm here representing the uh, uh, Sale Energy uh, located at uh, 59 Technology Park. But before I do that, we, we submitted the uh, green cards for the, and the uh, certified abutters list uh, for the property in question. However, there was one card missing, of which uh, I received it today, and I will hand deliver it. It was for uh, Prouty Trustees uh, in Worcester, and that be the uh, only one that was not returned, but it returned today. The property was, was actually laid out in 2000, uh, let's see, 2003, and it's basically staying as is. The only change is that we're going to uh, be putting in two 30,000 gallon propane tanks at the uh, most northerly westerly corner of the property. Uh, in order to do that, we had to do really three things. One was go before the uh, planning board for approval, and then the fire department, and then finally the uh, board of selectmen. 
on on the uh, 8th of September, we went for the uh, approval from the uh, planning board, of which they uh, approved it in the affirmative uh, on uh, the 11th of the month, and, and uh, with with no no provisions other than the fact that we had to get the other applicable permits. Then from there, we went to the the uh, actually uh, the water department to uh, get a. Uh, Permit for for the submittal this thing, which is actually under um, oh let's see oh what uh, for for the water the uh, uh, highway uh, fire department what we did is going to them they wanted to us to do a uh, pressure study on the property on the, so what we did is we had a uh, Performance Consultants Incorporated, which are a licensed fire protection engineers uh, located in, in Holland, Mass. And a, a study was done on that. And what actually came up with is, is that the uh, flow uh, positions uh, at even at 40,000 PSI was basically 500,000 gallons per minute uh, with, with a uh, pressure of around 29 PSI. The, the uh, thing I find that there was uh, talking to uh, the uh, fire, depart uh, fire department, I found that there was no negative uh, response on that. Um, so uh, right now, what we, what we have now is a uh, position going before your board for the approval of the two 30,000-gallon uh, propane tanks, of which both tanks will be above ground and because of it, uh, we, after we get your approval and the planning board approval and fire department, we have to submit the uh, application with all statements to the uh, state in Stowe, Mass, for approval because of the fact that we're putting the tanks above ground. If we put the tanks below ground, we wouldn't have to go to the state for approval. However, uh, we were putting them uh, above ground, mainly because most of the site is completely ledge, and there's no way of burying the tanks economically. And that's why we're doing that. Any questions? I'll be happy to answer them. Okay. Thank you, Lenny. Any questions from the board? Yes. I, I did get the sign off from the fire department today. Uh, Chief Grasso has no issues with the placement of the tanks uh, due to the water study that Mr. Jalbert referenced. Okay, that was going to be my question. Um, Lenny, I just have a question. On the application, you're talking about two um, 30,000 gallons, yet down at the bottom it says total quantity 48,000 gallons. Okay, what actually that is is that there's two 30,000 gallon tanks, which would be 60,000 60, gallons total of which the uh, fire department wants the tank to be filled at 80% capacity. That brings us down to 48,000. Okay, even okay. though they have the 60,000 gallon, they want 48. Okay, that answers that. Any other questions from the board? So. Okay, it is a public hearing, so do we have anyone calling in, Jeff? Let me check. Good evening. This is the public hearing for the sale of energy propane storage tank. Is there anyone on the line that would like to speak to that application? Is there anyone on the public that would like to speak to the sale of energy propane storage tank application? There's no one on the line and there's no email. I'm sure. Oh. Okay, is there a motion then to close the public hearing? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing, Chase. Is there a second? Okay, that was Ian. Okay, is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the propane tanks for sale energy LLC 59 Technology Park Road. There's a second. 
I'll second it, Ian. Okay. Any discussion? Mary, how do you vote? Mary, yes. Mike? Yes. Ian? Yes. Chase? Chase, yes. And I vote yes. Okay. Thank you, Lenny. Have a good night. Thank you for your time. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have a, another public hearing for Fort Flight 3 LLC, 420 Main Street, Heritage Mass. Is there someone to speak on it? Yes, Keith Heiser is here this evening. He's on the on the on the meeting. Keith? Yes, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Yep. I am here. So I'm gonna go over what we're proposing, what we're asking, or you're gonna go over first. Oh wait, Would hold you on like one me minute. to read I the notice? I forgot to have Mike read the public notice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> The Town of Sturbridge, Board of Selectmen, in accordance with Massachusetts General Law 148, Chapter 148, uh, Section 13, hereby give notice that a public hearing will be held on October 5th, 2020 at 6.45 p.m. for the application of Porchlight 3 Investors, LLC, for a license for storage tanks for flammable materials located at 420 Main Street, Sturbridge, Mass. Uh, 01566. The hearing will be held at Veterans Memorial Hall, Sturbridge Town Hall, 308 Main Street, Sturbridge, Mass. The Sturbridge Board of Selectmen elect, consistent with Governor Baker's March 12, 2020, order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 20, to hold the public hearing virtually. Details regarding how to virtually access a meeting can be found at HTTPS uh, colon forward slash forward slash www.sturbridge.gov uh, forward slash town dash administrator forward slash pages forward slash how dash access dash virtual dash meeting. That's the notice. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Okay, would you like to explain the project, please? Sure. Um, this is a property at White Farm at the corner, um, uh, the restaurant, the barn, Cedar Street Cafe, and there's two other buildings. That's a sale, uh, like a sales office, and then another building in between. Uh, originally, those properties were all separate parcels. Now they've been combined as one entity. And when that happened, their propane, um, their allotment for propane storage, of course, was no longer in those pieces, so it had to be um, combined. When they're presently over, I'm trying, sorry, I don't have the paper in front of me, running late tonight. Um, around 4,000 gallons they have on the property already, but that was to accommodate a, um, was not used for restaurants or cooking or things like that. So now we need to increase specifically the barn entity um, to get it up, have two 1,000 tanks underground for that one, and then one additional for the cafe. And then the other tanks in front of, um, it's the white building, they call it building two in between right next to the barn, which will be used as a function hall and overflow for um, cooking, uh, sorry, for restaurant. Uh, those two tanks will be replaced in that ground there and increasing the volume that to putting um, 5,820 gallons, but, uh, potentially that'll be the amount in ground at the property. Okay, that's, um about a 2,000 gallon increase from previous? Yes, yes. Okay, any questions from the board? Okay, any questions from the public? Good evening, this is the public hearing for the porch light propane storage tank. Um, is there anyone on the call that would like to speak to that application? Uh, public hearing for the porch light propane storage tank. Is there anyone on the public line that would like to speak to that?
There's no, no one on the line and no email. And no letters received either. Hey, is, hey, someone willing to make a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Chase? I'll second the motion. Please. Hey, any discussion on closing the hearing? Um, I just hearing? Want, Mary, I just wanted to know if there were any uh, uh, plans available. Uh, I mean, we have the assessor's maps and stuff, but is that the the best plans we have available? The, the last one we had actually a uh, more definite location of where these facilities are going. On, uh, is there anything, any site plan available that's more definite than the assessor's plans that we have? Um, all it's a direct replacement in 75% of the uh, tanks that are there that are already currently there. And then where there is a tank that, um, already existing for the barn, there'll be two next to it, two more additional. I can get yeah. more plans, but it's ba basically a direct replacement to it. Yeah. And, uh, I, I'm just looking to, I, I just want to make sure our fire department has adequate plans showing exactly where these facilities are going and they, right. i've been working very closely with them on this and i'm sure jeff will tell you i've been driving him a little crazy but i want to get this right and I, we're going to get it correct okay. with them and i know that we combined it and i'll get um, once we finally get that placement i will have a, a perfectly laid out area for all of it we want everybody safe as long as they get an as-built plan or something like that showing where you know exactly where it is because i think it's important in the event of something happening that they know where the facility is exactly yes 100 percent. yes no problem it's nice to map on page 45 is a little clearer but i think you want more detail than that i i think the the uh, fire department uh, needs more than that or I mean, this is in our GIS system. If uh, they could, you know, if it ends up being in our uh, GIS system, the fire department could, you know, know where it is within, mm -hmm. say, say a couple meters. That would be more. You know, this is just a little bit, uh, you know, not not accurate enough for. for uh, so, but as long as they, the fire department has the information, they know where the facilities are, I'm fine with it and I'm going to approve it. Perfect. Thank you. I'll take full okay. responsibility Perfect. to make sure on that. Okay. So we do have a motion and second to close the public hearing. Mary, how do you vote? Yes, Mary. Ian, how do you vote? Yes. Okay. Yes, Chief. Mike? Yes, Mike. And I vote yes. Okay. Do we have a motion then to approve? Mike, motion for to approve. Second, Chase. Okay. Any discussion? Mary, how do you vote? Mary, yes. Ian? Yes, Ian. Chase? Yes, Chase. Mike? Yes, Mike. And I vote yes. Thank you. Hey, thank you for tuning in and good luck. Thank you all very much. I greatly appreciate it. Have a great night. Thank good night. You. Okay. Take care. Okay, next we have a presentation on Pine Lake Resort from Mr. Morrow. Phil, are you? Your mic's off, Phil. There you go. Hello, Phil. Here we are. Okay. Philip Moreau here. Philip Moreau here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Thank you. We can. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I come before you tonight to simply give you a little progress update on our RV resort named Pine Lake RV Resort at 30 River Road 
here in Sturbridge, and I put together a very small video uh, photographic presentation of showing some relevant parts of the park when we first started this project almost two years ago to where we are today to kind of give you a good feeling for the progress that we've made. I will just simply note that we are very, very close to opening. We have received final approval for our buildings with regards to plumbing and electric. We have crossed a hurdle with the DEP and have uh, their approval uh, subject to two or three very uh, minor matters. They were here on site for four hours last week and they have basically allowed us, we have a permit in place for the discharge of our affluent and with a few basically administrative matters to clean up like getting a emergency uh, kit in the pump room and a set of as-built plans and a few other very minor details, we will notify the DEP that we've complied with the issues that they raised and are ready to discharge. We have a startup plan in place with the DEP and we're very excited about getting our doors open in the very near future, possibly within the uh, week uh, or shortly thereafter, as soon as, as soon as we can. All of our sites are now constructed. We've taken a 400 space RV resort and that to put it mildly was a little on the rundown side and we have converted it into 323 spaces that are a very high class, high end RV resort with 10 buildings, including four conference centers and six private bathhouses that have a total of 33 private bathroom suites. I've asked uh, Mr. Bridges to help me with the photographs uh, that we have from the old park, right, which uh, stand in contrast to the photographs that we have for the new park. Let me uh, pull those up. Uh, Jeff, are you? Okay, thank you. Can you see that, Phil? That is the, uh... yes, I can see it very clearly, thank you. <laughs> That is a typical site that existed at the park prior to uh, as when I when I bought the park back in April of 2018, and frankly, that is unacceptable. This is another close-up of another site. You can see the lake in the background. This site is, shall we say, well within the 25-foot no-touch zone and it is a mess. That is a dock right on the lake that was built by a guest of the park way back when. This is, again, something I inherited, uh, and uh, it looks like a heck of a place to do the laundry. There you see a nice assortment of refrigerators and other uh, utility uh, fixtures that are in a site that was, uh, when I first bought the park, the first thing I did was told everyone that we are undergoing massive renovations and I gave them a uh, time by which they must vacate the park. And the park has stood vacant now for almost two years. And this is what I inherited. And it took me approximately 72, 40 foot roll offs of sheer junk and garbage and drug paraphernalia, et cetera, to get the park cleaned up to the point where we could begin construction and building of a new park. That is the old 
main building that had a restaurant and bar upstairs and a store reception area downstairs. And we took that building totally down from, from the start. We've actually taken down every building with the exception of one small uh, maintenance building that we've supplemented with a larger state-of-the-art maintenance building currently. That is some of the great wiring that you see at the old park uh, where they simply put uh, their, util their wiring right on the telephone pole. Uh, I don't think that meets code. That's the old swimming pool. They had two pools. We hope to maybe eventually have two pools. We have only one thus far. And that's an old pool that was in extremely bad repair and was demolished. And that is, uh, that's the house that sat across from the office building that we tore down. We also tore down this uh, house which was next to the petting zoo that that was uh, adjacent to the house right along the small pond and stream that flows over beneath River Road over to uh, downstream. And that was a, uh, that was a, uh, that, that was, uh, excuse me, I have a UPS guy knocking at the door at seven o'clock at night, crazy. <laughs> anyway, uh, that was a, that was a, a residence house that was in very bad repair with uh, uh, septic tanks and septic fields underneath the house that were frankly, something out of maybe 50 or 60 years ago that were failing badly. That's the entrance into the uh, park. You can see the building that we tore down. The petting zoo is on the left side there where the fencing is right next to the pond and the stream that flow through there. That is a picture of one of the bathhouse facilities that is uh, in very bad shape. That's another view of another, that, that actually is the same pier as you can see, it's right on the lake, right in the, uh, squarely within the 25 foot uh, no touch zone. Another example, for a little further down from that, we have additional piers and boat docks and uh, basic, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words as to how to describe that other than it's just totally unacceptable. That is an old bathhouse uh, that basically had open showers and open restroom facilities. Uh, it was in extremely bad shape, and that building is also long gone and and forgotten. Another uh, good view of the type of clientele and uh, structures that were on the park when I inherited. Uh, the refrigerator on the front porch is always a nice touch. Uh, there's a another a view of the second pool with a huge uh, slide that would cascade down into a small uh, pool next to it. We've eliminated both the pool and the slide and the slide reception area. That's all been changed now and uh, replaced with a pool that I'll show you very shortly. That is a pool equipment building that has the wiring very similar to what you had seen before. And it is in very bad disrepair. Next to it is a spa that also, there, there's the interior of the pool equipment building. And if you can tell me how that operates, I would be amazed. This is one of the laundromats that they have. We have on our property now, we have over 50 uh, washers and 50 dryers. You can see here's 
six of their dryers, each of which is out of order, which is kind of typical of the of the property at the time I bought it. That's some of the uh, plumbing at the back of the shower facilities. That is uh, just nothing short of ridiculous. Okay, Phil, that's all the before pictures. Okay, and so, so basically what you have there is you have a park that existed known as Yellowstone or Yogi Bear Campground, the Yellowstone Park. And it had been there, I believe the ownership had been in place for about uh, 20 years and they kind of let the property get away from them. This is a current picture of the building that it, it was in the building that we just tore down not just tore down, tore down a couple of years ago, uh, but this is in the same footprint as that building, single story, state of the art. This is the check-in building where we have a small retail store selling RV supplies and logo items such as sweatshirts and t-shirts and baseball caps. Uh, we really want to focus on local arts and crafts uh, trying to find local artisans that can uh, market their goods in our store and really have a nice local flavor to it. Uh, if you could turn back to that last picture, Jeff. That building also has a state-of-the-art fitness center that I will show you a picture of. It has a arts and crafts room that is very large that's suitable for child and youth activities such as ceramic painting, tie-dye t-shirts, uh, uh, and other types of uh, kid activities. Uh, we also have in the back side of that building facing the quadrangle, we have a uh, billiard parlor with a shuffleboard court that includes two nine-foot old housing state-of-the-art professional grade uh, billiard tables and a 22 foot long shuffleboard, indoor shuffleboard court where we slide the pucks across the, the small little shuffleboard area. So overall, this is a, uh, the footprint of this building is a little smaller than the old building. It's obviously one story. And uh, this is just the beginning of our landscaping there, there are two uh, uh, Japanese maples. There's dogwoods around to the other side. There's uh, two redbud trees and a couple of other trees all along the front part there with a walkway that goes down. This is the first thing that you'll see as you enter into the property with our signage right there uh, incorporating kind of a uh, Indian a Native American Indian theme that we've adopted throughout the park. We've named all of the buildings after tribes, local tribes primarily, like Nipmunk and Quinnebog, and we have uh, name, uh, Indian names also for all of the roads. We're going back to the roots of our Native American Indians uh, to kind of prohibit, I mean, uh, it, to promote our, our camping aspect of what we have here. That is uh, a view uh, of the quadrangle area in this, this area is not quite complete. That's the barbecue structure on the right. That's a, the yellow building with the green roof is a events conference center that uh, can, uh, that will have, that has a two television, two large screen televisions in it and it will have a basic seating area of four or five different seating areas within it. It has a small warming kitchen. We don't cook. We simply warm up potluck dinners for the rally groups that come in droves to our parks and want a special place to hold their meetings and functions. And this building on the right is a, a large conference center that will probably hold up to 150 to 200 people. The building behind it with the kind of light brown roof is also a conference center. That's also kind of a 
a movie theater with a 4K projector and a 151-inch TV screen. And that will be for smaller groups with another barbecue area out in front of it. And then you over on the left side is the back side of the building we just showed you that has the office reception area, the arts and crafts room, and the billiards room on the back side. In front of that uh, area, that little round structure is a fire pit, and we'll have wicker uh, furniture, round wick, wicker furniture surrounding that. It'll have a 16-inch uh, granite ledge to it on which you can kind of prop up and kind of sit back and enjoy the fire. And over on the right-hand side in between the buildings, between the green building, green roof and the brown roof is a rectangular fire pit uh, also. So the idea is you can open up the sliding glass doors in any of those buildings, breeze out to the quadrangle area. Forthcoming on the quadrangle area will be a bocce ball court, two bocce ball courts and a badminton, a kind of a permanent badminton setup. And it will have extensive lawn furniture probably five to six different seating areas where groups of anywhere from four to 10 or 12 people can sit and talk and converse in that beautiful quadrangle area. That is, uh, that's the new pool that we have uh, pretty much in the same footprint as one of the old pools. It is a gorgeous pool, if I do say so, the front part that you're looking at there is a that circular lobe is a whale station where you kind of sit on a bench submer partially submerged in the water and just kind of sit back and watch the family or kids play this is a what's called a volleyball pool it has a maximum depth depth of four and a half feet so it goes from three and a half to four and a half to three and a half we'll have a volleyball net in the middle the far lobe is a splash pad area ideal for kids the depth there is only 12 inches and it has four bubblers that shoot water up for the kids to relax and enjoy not shown in the you see our safes our pergola shade structures in the back there and over on the far left hand corner you can't really see it as another barbecue area where we'll be able to have barbecues and we can just see the you know 1950s dance party out there uh hanging out at poolside that is a typical that's the new rv site that's the uh that's the only rv that's on the property currently that belongs to our electrician which uh, I allow to store there because he's such a great guy and he's doing such a great job for us. But it does give you a feel for how well constructed our sites are. They're all defined with railroad ties and fender board outlines. Uh, our roads are compacted gravel. And even in this weather, we've been able to grow a significant amount of grass. Uh, the grass is coming in nicely there. We could use a little rain, of course, but uh, we've been uh, diligent in getting the grass, getting our topsoil in place. We were able to harvest about 30,000 yards of topsoil, uh, and then we redeployed it for uh, giving us the chance and ability to plant uh, nice grass and have really spacious RV sites. This is the inside with a fisheye lens of one of our conference centers. You can see it's set up for seating areas, uh, generally around the TV screens. In that picture, you see the 151 inch TV screen over on the left. And over on the right, you see two smaller screens with two smaller seating areas. This is the conference center that uh, we call uh, the Nimchuk, Nimchuk, uh, conference center and it's very close to the lake uh, it has a patio that opens out onto another barbecue area 
the patio is really a palletized uh, wood patio. I wanted a nice wood feel uh, to kind of go with the camping and uh, you step out on a nice palletized wood uh, area uh, in that conference room. And there you can see over on the left side there, you can see our warming kitchen. We have two refrigerator freezers, two convection microwave ovens, two convection ovens for warming. We have an ice machine, a sink, and a dishwasher with a little serving island. And uh, this is uh, typical of, of our conference centers. Uh, that's, a, uh, that's the fitness room that I described in the front building, the resort center, if you will. Two ellipticals, two treadmills, two uh, bikes, one recumbent bike and one stationary bike. Three weights with the dumbbells, a pulley machine, and we also have a small closet that houses all of the balls and straps and and other uh, workout paraphernalia and mats on which to have some good stretching. Very nice little fitness room. This is uh, typical of the type of store that we'll have with uh, local paraphernalia, local arts and crafts. Uh, this this is our store in Virginia Beach, but this the type of look that we'll have. It will be a little better than this, actually, but because every park that we do gets better, but it, it just gives you a flavor for a very nice little clean area for retail sales, hopefully of local arts and crafts. RV supplies will have soft drinks and a very limited uh, food selection of really nothing significant. There's, there's our billiard room. Uh, I don't know why, what happened to our size there, I don't know. but uh, that's just the billiard room showing the two old house tables. And uh, that, that's another view of uh, one of our conference room seating areas. Note the mopping going on in the back of the picture there. We should have probably <laughs> cropped that out, but we're we're diligently trying to get everything together. This is an example of what we call one of our park model RVs. This is a uh, two bedroom park model RV that is built in accordance with the RV industry association guidelines for recreational vehicles. This one has skirting. This one has a little deck. Our Park model RVs at this park will not have any decks. They'll have stairs that are portable. They'll have skirting very similar to what you see here. But this is an example of uh, what we call our park model RVs that supplement our normal RVs. That's the inside of one of our park model RVs. You can see it has a uh, dining table, a kitchen, pots and pans up on the, uh, it's this, these are handcrafted Amish cottages with tongue and groove pine. Uh, Mr. Bridges was in one of these today and was uh, very, uh, very surprised to find that good pine smell when you come into these uh, cottages. They're absolutely charming and they are extremely popular at all of our parks. Uh, we have a uh, fair amount of, of park model RVs when we open, and we're going to test the market and make sure the market is there for these, but you basically drive right up to these and go check in. You know, you, you walk in and they're, they're yours. You don't have to go through the lobby. You don't have to ride in an elevator. You can park right next to it, but you carry your luggage five feet. You go up the steps and into the cottage. And we have three different types of cottages. We have a two bedroom, we have a one bedroom, and we have a studio. They are all roughly the same size, which is under 400 square feet. And uh, they are extremely popular. They will be priced basically below hotels 
but below hotel prices. That is a one bedroom, stu- that, that's a studio, excuse me. That's a studio uh, version of one of our park model RVs. Uh, that decking does come with it. It's part of it. It's integral to the design. These are smaller. These are uh, really closer to about 350 feet. All of our park model RVs have full bathrooms and uh, the ability uh, refrigerators and the ability uh, they have a two burner uh, electric stovetop. That is one of our bathrooms. If you recall the the bathroom that I showed you of the old Yogi. This is the new Yogi uh, called Pine Lake RV Resort. This is a granite floor, beautiful tile on the wall. We'll have some art in there. Most of the art will be Edward, Edward Curtis Prince from the 1900s. If any of you are familiar with that famous photographer that captured the spirit of the American Native American Indians uh, when he was committed with his brilliant black and white photography. It's absolutely stunning and his pictures are priceless. And we have replicas of all his pictures that will be scattered throughout our, our resort in theme with the uh, uh, Native American Indian, honoring the Native American Indian culture. That, that was the last uh, picture. That bathroom has a toilet. A, okay, Sorry. that bathroom has a toilet, a uh, shower, and a, and a sink. And you walk in and you close the door and you're in your own private bathroom suite. So that's where we are. Uh, we're very close to opening. I wanted to give the selectmen an update as to our progress. Uh, and we're excited to get open in the very near future. We have been conducting a few tours for uh, next season. And the response that we're getting is phenomenal. Uh, people are just in awe of what we've done. and stories where they bring their whole family and they've been camping there for a long time and they are so pleased to see that it has been rejuvenated and renovated and uh, they uh, commit to to uh, buying a season pass which would be basically from April through November. Hmm. So that is a little update as to where we stand. As I said, we have We've got our approvals in place. We're waiting now simply for our fire extinguishers to come back from the company that is updating all the fire extinguishers so we can get the fire marshal out and have him do the, his walk through our complex. Uh, we've had DEP, we've had the electrical. Uh, Clyde has been out several times. We've got the plumbing inspector has been out several times and Mr. Burlingame uh, is uh, uh, very uh, knowledgeable of where we're at and says, and is helping us orchestrate uh, getting our, our CEOs, which should be issued here uh, once we get our fire extinguishers in place and get a sign off on by the fire. So we're trying to do it right. And uh, we've made tremendous progress. And uh, that's, that's what it looks like. Okay, thank you, Mr. Morrow. Impressive. Does the board have any questions? Comments? Oh, Chase? Uh, Phil, I just want to tell you how great it looks. I, I drive by 15 at night and all the lanterns lit up. It really, really looks cool in there and you've done a great job. Thank you. Those, those are actually what we call our pagoda lights. And the beautiful thing about those lights, they're yellow is that they turn on and off by themselves. We don't even need a photo cell. It's a kind of a new development, and boy, that saved us a lot of time and aggravation, as you can well imagine. All of our street lighting is RAB, which is a very high-tech, sophisticated look in a street light. They are uh, uh, 78 in 
the equivalent of 78, the model is 78 in, and they're just gorgeous LED lighting that is throughout the park. And it's always a fine line developing just enough light, not too much because people are camping, but not too dark because people are camping. So uh, thank you for that compliment, Chase. Coming from you, that means a lot. It's really very, very nice. Those, those pagoda lights are very cool. We have a park that is much more angular, much more straight up and down and open than this park. This park has a tremendous woodsy feel. I mean, you, you are, you know, you've got your space and you got your site, but you're in the woods and there's uh, plenty of uh, trees, about 19,000 by my count. And uh, at other parks where we have those lights out, I had to go out and wave off a 747 that was looking to land on our <laughs> runway. That's, of course, a joke, but those lights are very cool. And we really, really, uh, they really, it, it's for the RVer that comes in late at night and needs to hook up to his pedestal and he's fumbling around and he can't see where the electric goes, can't see where the sewer hookup is. All of our sites have full water, sewer and electric. And you need to be able to see when you come check in late at night. Really? Yeah, I'm also very impressed by the slides. I particularly like the um, RVs, the wood in there is absolutely beautiful. Um, Mr. Moreau, you keep saying where you're opening soon. Um, what kind of time frame is that? In a month, three months, six months, just for the uh, viewer? I would think that we could open within the week if the oh, if a the week? Star, yeah, if the stars line up. We've we're done digging. We're done with site creation. Uh, where we had our roads, uh, the front entrance is all nicely paved now, uh, and we are. Uh, Normally, when I get to this point, we open our doors. And here we have uh, uh, one or two housekeeping matters to take care of, to say the least, but we hope to get those lined up and in line and open our doors here uh, very, very, you know, literally within the week. And we'll stay open through November and then we'll close or December, January, February, and March. And then we'll open and have our season, which will run April through the end of November. And I honestly believe that this will be one of the top RV resorts in New England. It is, there's nothing like this. I, I just will tell you, I've walked through 2000 RV resorts and this one with that beautiful eight acre lake, it is absolutely stunning. You know, the RV community, the, the type of clientele that we're going to attract with this type of facility is what Sturbridge wants. Uh, these, these are very wealthy people. They are a tight knit community that talk about where to go next. I mean, they really don't have a whole lot else to do. Like, where are we gonna go? And the, the buzz that we're going to create with this is extremely exciting. It won't grow as fast as I think, but it will grow really as I would like because <laughs> it never does. I'm a realist. It takes time. But within three years, we will be generating between four and five million dollars of gross sales in this park, hands down. That's a 6% Sturbridge lodging tax on $4 million. That's a 5.5% lodging tax to the state. That's uh, an increased assessment on the value of the property. And we're really excited to get this property open and get it moving because it's going to be, uh, it's going to be the rage. We'll have a full host of activities. That will include everything from murder mystery theaters to super soaker hay rides where the kids hop on that hay wagon with super soaker squirt guns and drive through the park and they squirt at all the RVers and the RVers pull out their hoses and <laughs> hose them back and return the fire, so to speak. 
So our, our resorts have been deemed essential in the seven different states in which we're located. So we are an essential business, including in Massachusetts. So we'll be able to stay open. Of course, we'll be fully compliant with all of the COVID regulations. Our parks in across the board right now have are setting records in their attendance. I mean, it's literally off the chart. I thought when March came and we took a, a hit on revenue that ranged generally 20 to 50% at some parks, and then April was even worse, I thought that the value and the future of these parks was not as clear as it once was. And since April, when things started to loosen up, we are setting record, record months. I will just tell you, uh, this park has 323 sites. Our park in Virginia Beach, uh, which last year in July did uh, $300,000, this year did $550,000. And I'm telling you, uh, we are the darling of Wall Street because we are safe. We, you, you are in your own private little Idaho. You can join to participate in an activity if you choose to, or you can just walk through the woods. And it's, we are, it's a very, I don't know how I got so lucky as to fall into this industry, but this industry has prospered in good times and in bad times. And frankly, I don't think it gets any worse than it does right now. Yet our business across our 11 parks is off the chart. Okay, thank you, Mr. Murrow. We all wish you luck. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity and thank you for getting me on the agenda. And thank you for listening. And by all means, one and all are invited to please come down and take a look, see for yourself. We'd be happy to give you a tour. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have thank a good you. night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda, we have department reports, facilities. Robin, are you there? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Good evening, everyone. How are you today? Hi, Robin. Good. Oh, fine. Um, so I submitted my annual department report to you all. I'm sure you received it in the packet. Um, I, oh, gosh, good thing I wasn't limited on pages. I would have ran out of room. Um, listing the projects that everyone in, in staff has been involved with helping us keep up with the facilities this year. Um, been very flexible with helping us catch up on past projects, future projects, and um, helping out recreation, conservation, um, everybody's just been wonderful to work with the last year. Um, and, you know, it's been a change of pace from practicing architecture, but a very welcome one, and I'm um, happy to be here. If you guys have any questions, um, I will try to keep it short and sweet. Hey, Mary? Um, hi, Robin. Thanks for your report. I know you mentioned that you didn't get as much done that you wanted to because of COVID, but I think you've done a great job in your uh, first few projects, um, COVID notwithstanding. So we wanted a facilities manager for a long time. I think you're doing a really good job. Um, I just had a couple of questions on cleaning. Yes. I know you mentioned that you, like, you did the window wash and the facilities, you have window washing, and then you have every place you've done it. Did the nursery school get their windows washed? Uh, they did this year with the deep cleaning that we did. And then actually, that was one of the items I, I missed. Um, so one of the things I'm using for COVID right now, before the school opened up, we did a full deep cleaning of the nursery school. So that did include the window washing. Um, and that was sort of in conjunction with finishing up the uh, insurance claim. Um, oh, you just yeah. didn't put it, so I thought, I, I hope they're getting clean, too. And yeah. then the fit and chairs, um, I don't even know if there is carpeting, but did the, 
Does the nursery school have carpeting and how about the DPW and the public safety? Did they all have their carpets cleaned too? Um, the, we had some limited carpet cleaning in the safety complex. The front lobby was done. Uh, that was in the operating plan for fiscal 2020. Um, DPW just installed their carpet. And so um, as soon as I can order in this year's uh, budget, the new carpet extractors, uh, we will get to get to DPW and we'll get to some of these other spaces that didn't get done last year. But uh, that was one of my, my goals for acquiring machines for us to do that in house this year. Okay, awesome, thank you. Hey, anyone else? Robin, I just had a question on uh, the trash services, things that was um, consolidated. Have there been any problems or is that going smoothly? Um, no, that's going very smoothly with Re Republic. They, um, I haven't had any issues uh, once they delivered the dumpsters. They also brought us an additional dumpster for Cedar Rack for the summer and that's uh, been removed since. So, um, no, so far so good, Republic. Okay, that's good. And I'll echo Mary's uh, comments about being a thorough and informative report. Okay, anyone else on the board? Yes? Yeah, I just want to thank Robin for a great year, um, having her expertise and her, and her just tenacious attitude towards getting things done has been a godsend. So, thank you, Robin. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, Robin. Oh, I'm, night. I'm in for the long haul tonight. Um, but I would like oh. to say one last thing, right. Mary, um, and yeah, that ahead. I echoed in my report is I'd like to personally thank Jim Mortel, Michael DeHaan, and Sean Lane, so the three custodians. Without them, this last six months taking care of the facilities um, and our first responders and staff, I would have had a lot of uh, difficulty being able to take care of everybody during this period of COVID. So I'm greatly appreciated to the three gentlemen that are working for us in facility. Okay, good. Okay, next we have the town administrator's report. Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. My report is in the packet and I'd be happy to answer any questions on anything. Um, just a couple of other items. Halloween, according to the Board of Health, uh, State Board of Health and Local Board of Health, we are on for door-to-door -door trick or treating. This afternoon, the, uh, the guidance came out and I'm gonna put this up on my screen, which will be published online uh, and on Facebook, different pages. Let me uh, get this put up here. So this is kind of a guidance document that will be published probably statewide on trick or treating. Um, so we have some guidance to circulate through the community. We've been getting a lot of calls. I'm sure your neighbors who know you're on the board are asking you as well. So it is a go for door to door, but uh, you know, we got to use our common sense. Everybody, you know, don't put your hands on the bowl. Everybody takes your turns and those kind of things. So that guidance will be published uh, this week. We don't know yet about the Horribles Parade. I think Recreation and the Fire Department are still working on whether or not that will happen. We should have an answer in the next week or so on the parade. Um, also, a new item, we're taking a hard look at our net metering contracts uh, for energy with Blue Wave. Uh, I know this, uh, there was, you know, this was started back in 2018, but we're noticing an imbalance in the allocations on the different buildings and where the credits are building up and where we're not expending credits and the amount of credits that are being allocated to the town. So we're working with Beth Greenblatt, who's our consultant, to kind of take a hard look at those contracts, take a hard look at the allocations and see, you know, how to right, the, right size this, this project um, and balance it out. Um, there may be some credits owed to us. We may owe some credits to somebody else uh, we may be owed some money from National Grid. We may owe some money to Blue Wave. We're still working through the entire process, but we're going through that with Beth and uh, seeing if we can sort that out and get this trued up amongst all the different accounts. Um, and there'll be more on that in the next couple weeks um, as we go forward on that. 
Uh, finally, I did finish the, the next round of my purchasing classes, which was goods and services. Um, so I have one more class to go, and then I can get certified as a purchasing officer for the town. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any, any questions, comments? Mary? Um, lost my train of thought. Oh, on the 508 International, I know you, you're working on it and you're scheduling a conference call. Did that not take place yet? Uh, it's Wednesday morning. We, ha taken. we had a conversation right after the tour about what do we know, what do we don't know based upon the information we heard from the owner, you know, where do we stand, and that's kind of where we left it with the motorized activities. And we have to take a look at the zoning and how it relates to what we heard from the, from the owner. So we're having a call Wednesday morning with the attorney to kind of flesh this out a little bit. Okay. Um, if possible, I'm not sure I'll be able to do it, but will you let me know the time? Because I might be interested in just listening in on what the attorney has to say. Uh, that's up to the board. If that's the board wants that, I mean, because if we're going to have, I mean, if there's more than one or just one, that's fine. But if we have more than two, we're going to have to publish a meeting. So I don't have any heartache on it as long as we don't have a quorum. Was anyone else interested? No. So if it's just Mary. Okay, I'll get her the. Uh, I'll get you the. Yeah, and I'm not. I, that's fine. I'll get you the. It's on the. Okay. I mean. I'll get you the information if you want to right. participate. I, I, I. Okay. I thank the board members for letting me sit in on that because um, I had the. I wrote a memo to Jeff with a bunch of questions, but I'm more than happy to share it with the other members. I'm always hesitant though because I don't want us to communicate, and then we have a local meeting violation. I may not be able to do it, but I just wanted the option um, to mm -hmm. listen in if I'm able to. Sure, sure. And then I just had one other question, Jeff. You're still, you're still working with council on coming up with, well, a memo similar to the one that you gave, that council gave us on municipal employees that kind of just set forth what are the parameters for approving a racetrack in Massachusetts and um, what the criteria that we use for the public hearing, that kind of thing. I know you said you were working on it. We are. Uh, right um, now, we, we still... It wasn't in the... Right now, we still don't even have a bylaw uh, that we would consider uh, uh, sufficient yet. So once we get a bylaw done and everybody agrees kind of on the bylaw, then we'll work on timing because until we have a bylaw that is acceptable to both parties, I, I really don't want to spend a lot of attorney time and the attorneys are working on the bylaw, but I don't want to spend a lot of attorney time creating a roadmap that we may not even need until we get this bylaw done. Yeah, no, I, you don't want to waste the time. I guess let me just clarify what I'm looking for. I just want to know what the statute is and what the criteria the selectmen use, because we were told that in addition to going to planning, and planning has a zone, you know, that's just typical, a zoning change, they have the public hearing. But we were told, I think by counsel for the applicant, that simultaneously, we also have a public hearing before the Board of Selectmen to approve a racetrack in our town. And I just would like to know from our counsel, what is the legal parameters of that public hearing that we hold? Because I don't want to hold a public hearing and not know what criteria we use to evaluate how we're going to vote. So it's really not a timeline that I'm looking for as much for this particular applicant, but I just want to know under the law, what is the process? I understand the process for the zoning and coming up with a zoning bylaw, but I thought that's only one half of the picture, which is the zoning change. I could be wrong, but I thought council, the Georgia said, we also have to hold the public hearing and approve a racetrack in the town of Sturbridge. And rather than be told that from the applicant's attorney, I, I want a paragraph, uh, a one-page memo, letting us know what statute it, that falls into, because I've never had a public hearing like this before. 
And I don't know when it's held. I don't know if it's held after the zoning change, before, that kind of thing. I feel very much in the dark in terms of what the process is. So that, that's what I was looking for. And, and that's Not so much what's happening at the zoning end. And, and I understand that okay. fully, and I understood that from the time you've asked for that. But again, until we know we even have a project, you know, we're not, you know, we're, 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 we're not very far along from where we were when you all accepted the responsibility of sponsoring the bylaw. So right now, KP and the attorney for the applicant are working on fleshing out the bylaw. You will need to have a public hearing as a board on the location of a racetrack, but we're not even close to that happening right now. Okay. That, that's all. I'm starting to get questions, and I guess I can research this. I even want to know what. No, I, we'll we'll get it, Maybe Mary. Get we'll get back. it to you. We, I mean, we'll get it to you. But we, right now, everybody's been focused on trying to get the bylaw back and forth, and we know what you're looking for, and we're going to provide every ounce of information to the board. We've okay. even told the applicant we're not moving forward on anything till we get a bylaw or till they put a roadmap together on how they're going to educate the public on what's going on we can't have a we can't have a town meeting to to have a bylaw approved because there's no good way to have one in the winter time so all this is flowing into the time frames it's and i get the whole bylaw i was doing my own research and i couldn't find what mgl uh -huh. applies to racetracks I guess even just knowing that, and I, I can pull up the statute myself. I just want to know what statute it falls under, what regulation it falls under. Okay. That's all. Yep. In the meantime. Mm -hmm. Hey, anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Hey, Thank Nick, you. On the agenda, we have a letter of resignation from Robert Barrows from the Sturbridge Department of Public Works. Is there someone willing to make a motion to accept the letter? I'll make a motion to accept the resignation of Robert Barrows from the Sturbridge DPW effective October 1st, 2020. Jake. A second? I'll second I'll the motion, Ian. Either way. Any, any, any discussion? Mary, how do you vote? Mary, yes. Ian? Yes. Kate? Yes. Mike? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, next we have consideration and possible action on the concurrent to the appointment of Erin Carson as Administrative Assistant for the Conservation Department. Jeff, you want to go over that? Um, yes, Rebecca Gendrow and uh, Jean Bouban have interviewed the applicants for the Administrative uh, Assistant position in Conservation and have recommended to me, and I've appointed Erin Carson, who's currently the admin for the Board of Health, uh, to take that position. Erin is on the meeting tonight if you have any questions. Hey, good evening, Erin. Hi, everybody. Hi, Erin. Hey, anyone, Hi. anyone have any questions? Now, Erin, will you be resigning from the Board of Health position? Yes, effective the 14th of October. Hey, any other questions? Hey, somebody want to make a motion then? I'm going to concur for the appointment of Aaron Carson as administrative assistant in conservation at the rate of $20.28 per hour effective October 15, 2020. Chase. Is there a second? Mary, I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? Mike, how do you vote? Yes. Mike. Chase, how do you vote? Yes, Chase. Ian, how do you vote? Yes. And I vote yes. Congratulations, Erin. And I vote yes. That's okay. 
Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Mary. <laughs> too American. I know, but when the, well, when the pictures move around, too, I get lost. Uh, <laughs> Aaron, I just, uh, want, I just want to say I'm very happy when we have good employees that we move them around um, rather than have lost. Aaron, I don't know if we would have or not, but I'm very happy that we you found um, a department that you're excited about um, transferring into. So that's great. Well, thank you so much. Hey, have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have consideration and possible actions on the concurrent appointment of Terrence Masterson as the Economic Development and Tourism Coordinator. Jeff? Yes, um, with the departure of Kevin and Todd, we recruited uh, once again for the Economic Development and Tourism Coordinator. Uh, Terrence Masterson applied, uh, Jean Boubon, uh, Brian, Brian Amity, who's the chair of the Sturbridge Tourist Commission, and I interviewed the applicants, and Terrence was by far uh, the most knowledgeable and just the best possible candidate we could find. Terrence is on the meeting tonight, but he's already provided more analysis on our hotel tax and meals tax than uh, we could ever hope for. Uh, he brings a wealth of knowledge, and I'm very excited about having him on board. So we really look forward to him joining our team. Okay. Anyone have any questions for Taryn? Taryn, uh, you want to say anything? Oh, Mary? No, I don't have a question. I was just also very excited that um, to have the, this data on our revenue and what we well what we've lost because of COVID, but this kind of information is very very helpful. So I was very impressed and equally excited that we have somebody else to fill that position and um, somebody with the kind of knowledge and attention to detail that Terrence has, at least in the documents he has given us so far. So excited about it. Thank you. Terrence, you want to say anything or? Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to have the job. I appreciate it. It's an honor. Um, I, I think Sturbridge is a terrific community. Um, I've had experience with tourism in Cayuga County um, and economic development in Westchester and in Northampton. And I look forward to um, helping in any way that I can. I want to reach out to the businesses that are in the community to find ways to help them. I want to support Elizabeth McCabe in her economic development study and help Open Door with their brand and marketing studies. And I think it is fantastic that the town is picking on those exercises to study and plan and create a way of a community to talk together and create a document that identifies what your goals are, what your needs are, what your wishes are, and then to work forward together on them. Um, that's really a positive, terrific way to go forward. Um, and I really think that's great. Um, and I'm happy to hear from any of you as to what you think is important. And on top of continuing to figure out ways to measure and record data to measure where we are and where we're going, it also helps us, you know, market ourselves and change what we do or improve it and measure how things are going. So I think that's an important part of my job as well. Um, and I'm, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm raring to go and, um, and I thought the whole RV presentation was terrific. <laughs> I really for a community to have that, wow, it's going to be a lot of fun to see if there's a spinoff to that, if those folks go out and shop and spend money and take and engage in commercial commerce, it's going to be fun to see if there's ways to market what the town has into those residents, whether it's through social media or traditional media, and whether that's going to be, how that's going to be responded to. But boy, that when you look at where that park was, and it really wasn't operating on a ex ex basis and then you're going to bring in all of these people with, with 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 energy and enthusiasm it's going to be fun to see what comes out of it so that's that's really great and I'm happy to answer any questions any questions from the board yes. somebody want to make a motion then of course um, Mike, I'll make a motion to concur with the appointment of Terry Masterson as Economic Development and Tourism Coordinator at a salary of 50135 
contingent on successful completion of pre pre employment screening. Uh, Mary, I will second. Okay. Any discussion? Chase, how do you vote? Yes, Chase. Mike, how do you vote? Yes, Mike. Ian, how do you vote? Yes, Ian. Mary? Mary, yes. Yeah. And I vote yes. So again, congratulations, Karen. Yeah. Thank you. When is the expected start date, Jeff? Uh, he's going, I think he went today for some screening. Terry? Yeah. So probably later in the week or first of next week. Great. Okay. Great. Look forward to working with you, Terry. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, have a good night. Yep, thank you. I'll, I'm Terry, I'm going to okay, give you a call tomorrow. Have consideration and oh. Yeah. Okay. Consideration and possible action on the acceptance of the warrant for the 2020 state election and authorize the signing and to post and to post it. Also, are there any questions on that? Hey, does somebody want to make the motion then? I'll make the motion to approve the warrant and authorize the signing and working thereof, Chase. Yes, yes, Ian, okay. Any discussion? Mary, how do you vote? Mary, yes. Mike? Yes, Mike. Chase? Yes, Chase. Ian? Yes, Ian. And I vote yes. Okay, next we have possible action on the South Indies for winter of 2020 to 2021. Butch? Yeah, we, uh, we bid our salt through the uh, consortium. We bid the uh, road salt, normal road salt, through the Shrewsbury Consortium. And we got a uh, bid price of 4650 which is uh, $1.65 cheaper than the state contract. And then we also bid the uh, treated salt through Oxford Consortium, and we got a price of $60.17, which is actually $2.10 cheaper than last year and $5.73 cheaper than the state contract this year. So we did zero well with the salt contracts. Hey, good. Any questions for Butch? Butch, how much treated salt do we actually use? We we put a number of 500 ton last year. We probably only used like 200, not much. We didn't have much cold weather last year. So it all depends on the weather. If it gets below 15 degrees, you want to use the treated salt because you can't, the regular salt won't melt mm -hmm. below 15 degrees. So you need treated salt for just those occasions. Okay, any other questions? Okay, somebody want to make a motion? This is Mike. I'll make a motion to approve the contracts with Eastern Minerals at 4650 per ton for uh, uh, untreated salt. Morton uh, salt at 4669 for 30% uh, uh, untreated and uh, uh, lead salt at sixty dollars and seventeen cents per ton for uh, treated salt for ice control materials for twenty twenty one through twenty uh, tw twenty twenty through twenty twenty one. Is there a second? Second, Chase. Okay. Any discussion? Ian, how do you vote? Yes, Ian. Okay. Mike? Yes, Mike. Chase? Yes, Chase. Mary? Mary, yes. Yeah. And I vote yes. Okay. Thanks, Butch. Yep, Hope you don't problem. use it. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. 
Yeah, I can imagine. Okay. Next, we have consideration and possible action on the selection of delegates and alternates from the Board of Selectmen to the Central Mass Regional Planning Committee. Now, Mike, I know you were our delegate, and Mary, you were the alternate. Mike, are you still interested, or is anyone else interested? If anybody else is interested, I think it's a good experience. But it's basically, you have to go to four meetings a year, uh, quarterly meetings. Isn't anybody else interested? Mary? I'll stay the alternate. Uh, as a matter of fact, did you go to the first one, Mike? Uh, I think the, the one in, uh, yeah, there, I think there was one, the, the, there's uh, uh, one that was canceled. I went to one this year, that's it. So I don't know what the, uh, I, I don't remember, I think they canceled a couple of them or had, we had one, one that was on, uh, virtual. Yeah, because yeah, the next one's November, January, and then March. So yeah. do we have a motion then to appoint Mike as the delegate and Mary as the alternate? So moved, Chase. Second. second. Okay, any discussion? Jeff, I just have a, a comment on the letter we got from Central Mass, um, it lists um, Chris Bouchard as alternate. I believe he's alternate from the planning board. Planning board, yeah. Yeah, they I also- Point the same thing out, yeah. Yeah, they also sent it to the town of Sutton. So, you know. Yeah, I know. These things happen. There's a lot of talk. A little bit right now. <laughs> okay, Chase, how do you vote? Yes, Jake. Mike, how do you vote? Yes, Mike. Ian, how do you vote? Yes, Ian. Mary, how do you vote? Mary, yes. Uh... Okay, and I vote yes. Okay, next we have consideration and review of the authorization of $1,000 of project funds from the town administrative budget for the purpose of conducting a background investigation on the finalists for police chief. Any questions, discussion? Someone want to make a motion? I will. Um, authorize the use of $1,000 of town administrative project funds for the conducting of a background investigation on the candidate for chief of police. Second, Mike. Okay, any discussion? Mary, how do you vote? Mary, yes. Yeah. Chase, how do you vote? Chase, yes. Yeah. Mike, how do you vote? Mike, yes. Ian, how do you vote? Ian, yes. And I have the same on that. Okay, Alex, did you get that? I'm sorry, what was the last part? Is, Mary, did you say yes? I said no, yes. I, I, I think she meant Mary oh. Blanchard. One of, us, one of us is going to have to change our name. No, <laughs> it was Mary Blanchard. Ab abstained, okay? Abstained. So four, four zero one out, okay? Okay, I thank you. Mary. I have a question. Um, are you doing this in advance to line up the money, or have you already made the selection on, has the committee already made the selection on who they're going to be recommending for chief of police? No, this was just something we put out there. Uh, the selection committee, we put this together, and I forwarded it because I wanted this in place before we started interviews. We haven't started the interviews yet of the finalist candidate. Oh. Okay. I, I did. I, I 
that's good. I thought they were a lot, you were further along and I thought I didn't hear anything about it. So I get it. Thank you. Okay, next we have consideration and possible action on a memorandum of agreement amended among the Massachusetts Department of Transportation and the Town of Sturbridge and the U.S. Department of Transportation Federal Highway Administration, Eastern Federal Lands Highway Division, for the design and engineering services for the Grand Trunk Rail Project. Jeff, you want to say something about that? Yes, we currently have a, a memorandum of agreement in place. However, with the increases in the budget due to some additional engineering and environmental studies that were necessary and the increase in the revenue from the new $150,000 trail grant, uh, we had to update the MOA to account for both the new expenditures and the new revenues. As you can see, there's still about a $214,000 uh, difference between the expected total cost and what's available. However, we're not at 70% plans yet. So once we hit the 70% design, we should have a, a better handle on the total cost. And there is a $121,000 contingency in the budget now. So some of those numbers may compress as we get closer to final design. Okay, any questions from the board? we want to make a motion then this is mike and i'll make a motion to uh, approve the revised memorandum of agreement massachusetts department of transportation the town of sturbridge and the u.s department of transportation federal highway administration eastern federal lands uh, highway division for the design and engineering services for the grand trunk trail project okay is there a second? Second, Chief. Okay. Any discussion? Ian, how do you vote? Yes, Ian. Mike? Yes, Mike. Chase? Yes, Chief. Mary? Mary, yes. And I vote yes. Okay. Next, we have old business. COVID-19 update. Do you have anything else for that, Jeff? Uh, just in addition to clearing out the top floor of the town hall uh, due to the elections, we're also going to give the employees that work upstairs in town hall the option to work a flexible schedule or work from home uh, so we're not mixing with a bunch of uh, people. Uh, in the top floor, there's really no way to separate the people upstairs uh, like we do downstairs with the plexiglass offices. So there'll be some uh, people working from home, people working from different hours during those two weeks. Also, uh, we looked at trying to provide some hard separation between the doorkeepers and the people entering the town hall and COB. We really don't have that capability due to egress issues. Uh, so we're probably going to eliminate the doorkeeper at COB immediately and allow those departments to track at each office. They have the plexiglass, which provides that separation we're looking for. And then ha keep the doorkeeper at town hall until after the election and then move to a office-based uh, contact tracing model. Um, that's kind of where we are now. Any questions from the board? Okay, then we have the uh, Board of Selectmen participation in the Municipal Vulnerability Program stakeholders meeting. There are three of them. Yeah, very similar to the conversation. Uh, uh, yep. You know, we want the participation of the Board of Selectmen, and perhaps you all could pick a couple different nights so we're not having a quorum. Uh, for any of these one meetings and you all can participate. Uh, there'll be three opportunities for different meetings amongst different stakeholders in the community. Uh, if you pick a date, let me know and we can set you up with the invitation for that particular night. What page is that in our, where is that in our um, hand, um it's, agenda? It's, it's part of my, uh, my memo, town administrator's report. So it's page 59. 
Yes. Okay. Do that. All right. Do you have the dates there already? We have yeah. the 14th, 28th. Oh, okay. I'll no? look at it. Mm -hmm. Look at it. Let me know which date you want. If uh, we don't have a quorum, we'll get it set up. If there is, we'll try to see if there's a night where we don't get a quorum. Nice. Okay. Okay. Yes? Uh, one other thing, going back to COVID, we did get a request uh, from a resident to see if there's a way to, to assist the uh, restaurants with staying open uh, during the colder months. To that end, I reached out to the 14 locations that have outdoor dining. I heard back from six of them. Uh, four aren't interested in continuing when the weather gets really cold. They don't feel the customers are going to participate, you know, want to eat outside even in a heated environment. Uh, two did express an interest. One was more interested in getting relief from, you know, the town, uh, town bills like water sewer bills or taxes. Um, and just so we're clear, the, the type of heaters we would need to help with the tents would be, wouldn't be the pedestal type heaters. These would be where the heat would be generated outside the tent and then duct worked into the tent. You can't have the, the propane heaters under the tent itself. Um, you can have them on a patio, but not in, underneath the tent. Uh, and the request was for somehow the town to support purchasing the heaters and loaning them to the restaurants that want to continue in the winter time. We did check with town council. Uh, the town funds can be used, the COVID funds can't, but town funds could be used. Uh, we could go to the finance committee and get kind of a uh, reserve fund transfer and purchase some of these heaters if there were interest in the business community. Um, but right now out of 14, I've heard from six with two interests involved some already have the heaters uh, the tents are very expensive to rent through the winter time uh, so it's kind of a bigger picture than just buying some heaters and, and handing them out so I'll be happy to have any conversation you want about that Jess, did, we... Jess, did you get any um, information on that uh, no I've not priced them my understanding from just anecdotal Conversations with some of the restaurateurs, they're like two thousand dollars a piece. Because they're they're not the pedestal ones. There, okay. it would depend on. Yeah, uh, uh, they're different. They have to, the combustion has to occur outside of the right. tent. Yeah. Um, because I know I discussed this with Jeff, and that was one of the my concerns about how many restaurants would be interested the cost to them when they could be delivered because if something's going to be delivered in December that's a bit late but Jeff if you could get all that information together before the board takes any action on it sure yeah I'll try to get to, I'll try to get to um, the price I just wanna, if, okay I, I don't object obviously we know how much they cost but I the select people that the um resident um, turn to and I think Mary also was on the uh, was one of the recipients and I did contact her and I fully support it I think it's a great idea um, whether it um, we go to the finance committee use free cash or we approach um, the Sturbridge Tourist Association to see if there's any room in their budget because um, as our new tourist coordinator showed us we lost in a three month period more than $10 million, a 59% decline from last year to the three months, the three COVID months, June, July, August. And um, I think even if there's just two restaurants interested, sometimes word gets out and then there's more interest. And even if it's just two, that two that can stay up a little, stay open a little longer. I also think. I agree, maybe December is too cold, but um, I, I'm not sure that our whole pandemic is going to be gone in January, even if we have a um, vaccine, it's not going to go to the whole population right away. It's gonna to go to first responders and people at high risk. So we may still have some with restaurants. So I wanna open 
in April, we would be able to like furnish a few um, heaters for them. So I just think it's a, a great idea. Um, the resident also said, you know, bring your own blanket. It's like a marketing thing. So I'm hoping other board members see this as a good way for us to help the business community out. I, I think it's a great idea. And I also think um, the resident had suggested, you know, with pandemics over, we can up the heaters for auction. But I think that so recreation may have a use for them during Halloween or the Christmas um, lighting, whether or not they can afford this year. I think we would be able to make use of them. So I just want to say for the record that I think it's an excellent idea. Okay. Mary, I'm fully supportive of helping in restaurants any way we're capable of doing reasonable. But we do need a whole lot more information on the cost and oh, I you know what students they'll be. So if Jeff can get that together we can you know, we have another meeting in October. How's the rest of the board feel? Ian? I can tell you from experience, those heaters are currently very hard to find. I mean, you can find them. They're a lot more money than they were, you know, five or six months ago. So you're going to have a hard time tracking them down. A lot of people are buying them up and stockpiling and getting ready and trying to extend their year. But from talking to customers, a lot of people are not looking to uh, bring their own blanket or bring their own jacket. They're really looking to sit inside uh, when the cold weather comes. And I think a lot of people are becoming more comfortable sitting inside now that we've had months of this going on. So. Anyone else? Okay, so Jeff, if you can work on all that information, that'd be helpful. Will do. Okay. Um, can I ask for old business from people? Not yet. <laughs> I don't remember either. Okay, any old business here? Um, I almost brought it up onto COVID, but I just want to remind residents that we do have a COVID update on our website because I will occasionally get questions and I, you know, forward them to the chair of the Board of Health. But the, the great conversation with her about transparency and um, I had different questions about businesses and, and positive cases and I urge residents to check our um, website. We're updating, um, the Board of Health is updating that with relevant information. Um, and I also want to say, and I'm going to reach out to the chair because um, I do get questions about testing. And everybody should know that now in Massachusetts, there's 18 sites through the end of October. Uh, it's Charlie Baker's Stop the Spread Initiative. And you can get tested with no referral, no cost to you, and you don't have to live in the city where these testing sites are located. Um, that was another question I had. So Worcester is the closest one for us. And you've traveled and you just want to get tested. You don't have to have symptoms. You don't have to have a doctor referral. And there's no cost. So that's the Stop the Spread initiative. Um, and I'm going to reach out and maybe that could be put on under our COVID update as well. But um, that's that's it for um, old business for me. Okay, Chase, do you have any old? I have no old, thank you. Mike? Yeah, I just wanted to comment on Mary's statement. Uh, also, uh, the the site in Springfield is uh, on in at the Eastfield uh, Mall, so that it's on this side of Springfield. So if it's shorter for some people to go towards Springfield for that, it you know it's. Uh, you know, it's also more convenient, so. You're right, Mike. I never go direction, but it's not yeah. far. Yeah. It's, it's, it's about equal distance and sometimes a little bit easier to get to. Hey, Ian, any old business? No. Nope. And I have no new business, Chase? I have no new, thank you. Mike? No new. Ian? Uh, yeah, I had a resident reach out to me about the policy of items being purchased through the town auction, the items that we voted on previously. And he had asked why town employees were barred from bidding on those items. 
and he wanted to know if we were interested in changing the policy. Okay, that's, uh, I received a question on that too, and I referred the person to um, Jeff. Jeff, did you get any calls on that? I got one email on that from a member of uh, work for the school, work for Borges Schools. Okay, and what's the response? I, I thank them for their comment. Um, you know, I, most, the towns I've worked in, we've not allowed public, the town's employees to, to bid on these things. I think it's one of those things inherent with working for an organization that offers things to the public. Uh, you know, I don't know what the history is in this town. Um, it was kind of a routine practice for me to make that recommendation to the board. If the board has a different opinion on town employees purchasing these town items, um, that's fine. Okay, I don't have any recollection of anyone purchasing in the past. I don't know if it's in our policy book or if it's just been practiced. As you say, it's been practiced with you. Uh, so why don't we check with um, our policy book and who would know when and who bought things in the past? Uh, Mary? Kate? No. had his hand up. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that I agree with our recommendation of our town administrator about the policy. I, I think if you open that door, it, it opens the door for some funny business. And I think that mm -hmm. I agree with our town administrator that that shouldn't happen. Hey, uh, okay, Mike, you were going to say something? But, what Chase, uh, Chase said is basically what I was going to say. The, uh, the uh, open, allowing town employees to uh, bid on these items opens uh, what's called the, the appearance of a con conflict of interest. It may not be an actual conflict of interest, but under the Massachusetts conflict of interest regulations, if there's a, an appearance that there's a conflict and a, a town employee is uh, gaining something that, that the general public uh, would not have access to by their knowledge maybe of the, the condition of a particular item that's being sold, whatever, if they gain advantage by bidding on an item that they have inside knowledge on, that's the conflict of interest, and we've got to be very careful about about uh, that sort of thing going on. I, I, uh, if uh, if you know, if we were even to consider it, I would would ask uh, that that anybody bidding on town and property would have to do a disclosure uh, that they they don't have any uh, special knowledge of what they might be bidding on. Okay, Ian, did you have any other new business? Nope, that's all for me. Mike? No, I don't have any other. Hey? No. Mary? No, I just have a question on what we put on um, when we said that we don't want um, town employees to be able to bid. Can their family, this is just a question that popped into my can family members of them um, bid on items? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. I have no new business correspondence, Mike. Yes, uh, we received uh, four pieces of correspondence. The first one was from the town of Douglas. Uh, actually, the the uh, board of selectmen and. Douglas uh, all signed a letter. Uh, they are not in favor of uh, a, a bill that's before the legislature that would uh, eliminate qualified immuni immunity for police officers. Uh, and uh, they explain why they're opposed to that. 
Our second item is uh, uh, we've got a letter from Jewel Environmental Corporation. I guess there was a, a they're, they're proposing a, a solution, a permanent, what they call a permanent solution to uh, a uh, disposal of uh, hazardous uh, material in front of uh, Old Sturbridge Village on uh, Stallion Hill Road. And uh, uh, that that will finalize that uh, that uh, spill, and then uh, the third piece of uh, correspondence we got was from uh, Central Mass uh, uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization, and it was uh, uh, a uh, report that uh, of the vote for the representatives from the Southwest Region that that occurred. Uh, on I think the 28th of September and uh, the uh, 24th of September and the uh, I, uh, Dennis Lamarche from Oxford is the Southwest region subregion uh, representative and uh, I Mike Supernard uh, will be the uh, alternate from Sturbridge uh, for the uh, Southwest region the last piece of correspondence are, is from our, uh, our, actually it's a couple of different letters uh, uh, regarding upcoming changes for charter communications and uh, one of them is uh, the, uh, the, the they're uh, adding uh, on uh, TV3 they're going to cease the programming it's not no longer be available on uh, channel 193 and uh, the uh, the other thing is uh, the uh, there there's a retroactive fee of a dollar nine dollar ninety nine to four ninety nine that will occur on uh, starting on October twenty sixth. So there's a a, a, uh, a an additional fee that uh, the customers will incur. Anywhere from a dollar ninety nine to four ninety nine, and that's all of the correspondence that we've received since our last meeting. Hey, does anyone else have any other correspondence? Okay, approval of minutes of September twenty first. Anyone have any corrections, deletions? Um, I just have a, a couple changes on page 183 about halfway through the top paragraph um, it says Vice Chair Dowling 508 international land is zone 4 Mr. Burlingame stated it's rural residential um, and then it goes on she asked how they are able to have a commercial business when it's zone for rural residential Mr. Burlingham stated he will look further into it. After that sentence, look further into it. Could you add this one sentence, Alex? M. Dowling requested that his opinion and findings be in writing. M. Dowling requested that his opinion and findings be in writing. And then I just have one other um, change. On the bottom of page 185, that last sentence, um, I think has, it doesn't read um, grammatically correct. It says she added she would like information on the standard for review, specific criteria for needed for a public hearing. So can we just say she added she would like information on the standard for review insert the word and specific criteria and then simply say for a public hearing before the board of selectmen okay. for a hearing before the board of and then it's just read better and that's it okay. anyone else have anything Okay, is there a motion to approve as amended? So moved, Chase. Second. 
Second, Ian. Okay, any discussion? Mary, how do you vote? Mary, yes. Ian? Yes, Ian. Mike? Mike, yes. Kate? Yes, Kate. And I vote yes, Kate. Citizens for? Let me check. Good evening. Is there anyone on the call that would like to speak in the public forum for the Board of Selectmen? Hello, is there anyone that would like to speak in public forum with the Board of Selectmen? There's no one on the line that wishes to speak anyway. Okay, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Yeah. Back in, Dave. Mary, how do you vote? Mary, yes. Ian? Yes. Mike? I guess I have to vote yes, too. Okay. Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you all. Have a good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we got a game on our hands here. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been cheating. <laughs>